Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to hashtag Grace1010. It's so good to be with all of you this morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to hashtag Grace1010. It's a great day. Uh, I want to encourage you share right now. Share the uh, stream. Share hashtag Grace1010. Um, hit that share button. Share it with your friends. Uh, there's people who would benefit from being a part of our devotion today if only they knew about it. And so that's where you come in. When you hit the share button, it goes out to everybody who you are friends with. And that's a really good thing because uh, people need to be encouraged today. And so that's what we're here to do. Good morning, Krista. It's so great to have you with us. Isn't it great that we are doing hashtag Grace1010 together? Um, the This is one of the things that I think that is really going to show uh, uh, that where God has borne great fruit out of this whole COVID season um, is that, you know, by by us kicking off hashtag Grace1010 as a way to keep our church family connected and to stay in contact with people and to keep sharing God's word and God's love with people. Um, the, the real beauty of what we're doing here is that this is going to continue. Um, we have chosen to uh, to keep going with hashtag Grace1010 every day because this is a great thing. It's it's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, when we look back at this whole COVID season that we've been in, one of the things that I really believe that we will see is the fruit that, uh, that was able to come out of this season. And so once again, I think that um, hashtag Grace1010 is a big, big part of that. So I'm so glad to have you this morning. Um, we're going to give just another moment to give people a chance to log on. We try to go on a little bit early um, just so that notification goes out for everyone and so that they can uh, tune in. And if you don't know about the notifications, you can turn on uh, your notifications. Matter of fact, you can, uh, you can set your Facebook up so that anytime that we have activity here from the church, whether we post something, uh, post a video, go live for any reason, that your Facebook lets you know about it so that you don't have to miss it. Um, that's one of the great things about our current technology is that uh, we can be uh, kept up to date. So it's a really nice feature. I want to say good morning to everybody who's just tuning in. Um, good morning, Minerva, and good morning, Gloria, and good morning, Steve, and good morning, everybody else. Listen, uh, as we're going this morning, drop something in the chat, even if it's just an amen. Uh, put it in there and, uh, and participate with this morning. So we're going to pray and we're going to get started. I think uh, it's going to be a great little word today. And uh, so let's pray together, Lord. I thank you for today. I thank you that no matter where we are, Lord, that you are there, um, that you are so faithful, God, that you have never left us or forsaken us, Lord, that you are always speaking to us. So I pray that uh, just in this devotion time that we're spending together, that you would speak to our heart, that you would embolden us, Lord, strengthen us. Um, that we would live a life that's worthy of the calling that we've received. Um, that's what your word tells us to do, to live a life that's worthy of the calling that we have received. So help us to do that this morning. Lord, you have placed greatness um, upon our shoulders. Um, Lord, you expect you have high expectations out of us, um, not in a demanding way, but Lord, because you want to use us to expand your kingdom and to share your love with those around us. And so help us to carry that well. So we, Lord, we just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So this morning, uh, this, you know, as most of these Grace 1010s are, um, some, some, listen, haven't you enjoyed all of these Grace 1010s where sometimes we go like really deep and we, and we talk about some really um, deeper things. This morning, we're going to talk about something that is simple enough that anybody can latch onto it, but that you will never get to the bottom of. And um, that's, that's the kind of stuff I like, stuff that, you know, you can understand it, um, but applying it will take your whole life. That's a challenge to me. To me, I'm challenged when uh, when there's a simple concept that uh, that I can always apply more of in my life. It gives me something I feel like I can strive for. But so this morning, we're going to be talking about faith. We're going to be talking about faith. And uh, I was just looking at some scriptures that I want to draw out and uh, some things that I want to share with you. But what got me thinking about this is that... Um, we live in a world, we live in a culture where people are, people have no problem coming up to you and saying, basically, you're dumb for believing in God. That, you know, whether it's online or, um, I mean, I'm sure that many of you have coworkers who, you know, I don't believe in any of that nonsense. And so it's, it's not the same as it used to be. Uh, in America specifically, you know, it used to be normal for people to go to church and believe in God. 
And um, it's becoming more and more normal that uh, that not only is that not the case, but they completely reject the idea that there's anything beyond um, what's in our physical universe. And uh, it's it's funny because there's so much in science. Uh, science is discovering so many things that they have always been there that point to the fact that we have a creator, that there's an existence that's beyond our current existence, but I won't get into all of that. Um, but it's funny how uh, people will be so quick to say, oh, I don't believe in any of that stuff. It's, it, you know, it's funny. Um, I don't know how recently I shared this, but um, it, so if people say they're atheistic, that means that they believe that there isn't a God. Um, if people say that they're agnostic, what they, what that means is basically, I don't know enough to make an informed decision about that. And what's funny about that word agnostic, we're actually going to get into the real devotion here in just a, just a quick minute. But what's funny about that word agnostic is that that's a, um, a Greek word and it means basically uninformed, you know, uh, don't have all the information. Well, the Latin equivalent of that word is the word ignoramus. Now, I, it would be funny to try to use that in a social setting sometime. Well, what do you believe in? Oh, I'm an ignoramus. You know, I just, <laughs> I think that's funny because, uh, you know, it, it doesn't quite ring the same as agnostic. Agnostic sounds sophisticated and all of that. But um, so we live in this culture where uh, people have no problem saying, I don't know what I believe or I don't believe in any of that. And so faith is a really big deal. Um, I want to, so I want to draw out some scriptures, just share some simple um, thoughts with you this morning that I hope that uh, you can take with you where you wherever you go. Um, I'm going to be reading from uh, this is Genesis chapter 15. I want to read it to you. The setup to Genesis chapter 15 is that God is called Abram. He's not Abraham yet, but he's called Abram, and uh, and he has promised that he will uh, that Abram will be the father of many nations, basically. So Genesis chapter 15, I'm not going to read everything in order here, but I'm just going to hit some high points. Um, verse 1, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus, his uh, chief servant, kind of his manager of his affairs. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son, who is your own flesh and blood, will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up in the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Big promise, right? Especially for a man who is 100 years old with a 90-year-old wife. And how is all this going to work? So verse 6, this is what I want to key, on, key in on with you this morning. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Who credited it to whom? Abram believed the Lord, and he, the Lord, credited it to him, Abram, as righteousness. Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord credited it to Abram as righteousness. Um, and he goes on to uh, to roll that out a little bit, and they have that powerful covenant there that's uh, in Genesis 15. I encourage you to read it. But that's what I want to key in on. 15, chapter 15, verse 6. Genesis 15, 6 says, Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Now watch this. Watch what Paul does in the book of Romans. He wrote um, a letter to the Christians in uh, Rome, and here's what he says, okay? Um, at the top of chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, Paul says, What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? Okay, so what he's saying is Abraham was our forefather, uh, the forefather of the Jews, right? All the Jews came from Abraham. So what, uh, what shall we say about Abraham? Because he is our, our, our earthly father, so to speak, our earthly ancestor, um, our forefather according to the flesh. If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. So what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in God, believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. So um, he's been building this case. Uh, Paul has been building this case about, listen, you, we're not justified by the things that we do. We're justified by our faith. Um, so I want to read this to you again. Uh, if, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, um, I want you to, I want to read this for you. Uh, verse 18, Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham believed 
Uh, no, I'm going to try that again. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Um, okay, I'm skimming here. Uh, okay. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he promised. And here's the point. This is why, verse 22, Romans 4, 22, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. So notice what Paul does here. Um, Remember, the book of Genesis, as well as uh, the whole, all five books of the, all, the first five books of the Old Testament, were written to the Jews by Moses, okay? That was the target audience. But look what Paul does in Romans 4. He says, um, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, this is in quotes in your Bible, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. So um, my point is, you know, it's okay to understand who the original audience was for our Bible and for uh, who the original intended audience was and how they would have received it. But listen, Paul is saying that's that doesn't just apply to the Jews at that time in that audience. That applies to us today, Jews and Gentiles. And so I'm, I'm almost out of time here. But um, my point in bringing up this whole topic of faith is I want to challenge you with a simple thought. Abraham was not saved Abraham was not given righteousness because God chose him. That might mess with you a little bit to hear me say that. But Abraham was not given righteousness because God chose him. Abraham was given righteousness because he believed God. See, we have an active role to play. If we don't, if Abraham wouldn't have had faith in God to fulfill his promises and he would have done his own thing, there would not have been right righteousness credited to him. But the fact that he believed in God, that step, uh, was credited to him as righteousness. And so my point for us today is, listen, activate your faith. Put your feet on the solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. Okay, Stand on your faith in the Lord. And not only stand on your faith and believe in God's promises, but walk that out. Okay, um, I want to I want to remind you, the only reason why, uh, why Isaac happened is because Abraham believed in God. Okay. Um, so in your life, God has placed his word in front of you. God's promises are for you today. So act on those promises, walk in those promises, take your daily walk, um, make every decision as if you are confident that those things are actually going to happen because I have great news for you. God's word is true. And if he makes a promise that's for you, then he will see it to completion. That's what his word says. And he's so faithful. I could take way more time and share with you about how God has been so faithful in my life. But that's what I've got for you today. Um, stand on your faith in the Lord and let your faith be what credits righteousness to you because you trust in God and you trust in his promises for you. Amen. So let's pray. Um, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning. Uh, hashtag Grace 1010 will be 10 a.m. every day. So uh, it's going to be great. There's great, great things happening here at Grace Church. So don't miss services. We uh, Through the end of this month, we are doing services at 8.30, 10 a.m. and 11.30. Also on July, June to the 28th, June 28th is Church in the Park. So we're so excited about that. Church in the Park is going to be at the Rupert Square uh, on June the 28th at 10 a.m. So show up there. It's going to be awesome. Share with your friends. This is a multi-church event, and it's an incredible time. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for hashtag Grace 1010. And Lord, I thank you that if we will just uh, put our faith and our trust in you, that you will credit that to us as righteousness, just like you did for Abraham. That's what your word says, and so we stand on it, Lord. It's as simple as that. Um, I just thank you for who you are. God, we are not, um, we are not righteous because of uh, what we say about ourselves, we're righteous because of what you say about us, Lord, that you give us righteousness when we will um, give you our heart, put our trust in you. So we love you, Lord. We thank you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and uh, for joining for hashtag Grace 1010. Share this video. There's plenty of people who weren't able to tune in live, so share it. Um, let's encourage those around us, okay? Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.